Tomo News presents Climate Change. Hey, where did that island go? Why flights between London and New York may soon be longer. The possibility of transatlantic flights getting any longer is nothing anyone wants to hear. But a recent study by researchers at the University of Reading says that lengthier flights are becoming a real possibility due to climate change. Flights between New York and London could lengthen in response to changes in meteorological conditions in the atmosphere that affect the jet stream. Researchers say that as the atmosphere warms up due to global warming, the jet stream will become 15% faster during winter time. The stronger jet stream will boost tailwinds, which may cause flights from New York to London to be shorter than the current 5 hours and 20 minutes. However, flights from London to New York are going against the jet stream, so trips may take more than 7 hours, making the overall round trip longer. Flights are expected to take a total of 2,000 hours longer each year, which means higher fuel costs and more CO2 emissions. The estimated increase in amount of CO2 emissions is equivalent to the annual CO2 output of 7,100 British homes. Scientists say that since this jet stream circles the globe, and because there's another in the southern hemisphere, it's possible that flights elsewhere in the world will be impacted by climate change. Study shows severe drought may be behind Mideast crisis. Much of the Middle East is in turmoil as the relentless civil war in Syria rages on and millions of Syrians continue to flee their country. Many others from North Africa and the Middle East are also seeking refuge from the conflict and instability in their own homelands. A recent study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research has attributed the conflict, at least in part, to a series of droughts caused by man-made climate change. The current mega-drought in the Levant region, which includes Cyprus, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and Turkey, began in 1998. To map out droughts over time, researchers examined tree rings from both live and dead trees. The scientists studied tree samples from countries bordering the Mediterranean. Tree rings are like an ecological footprint. Thin rings mean a tree lived through a period of drought. The thinner the ring, the longer the drought. From the data gathered, scientists were able to form an idea of drought patterns in the region in recent years compared to historical records. In their study, they discovered that the current drought in the Levant is 10 to 20% drier than the worst drought of the past 900 years. The drought has contributed to food insecurities and poverty in the region and led to a mass exodus of refugees out of the Middle East and into Europe. The cause of the drought is likely anthropogenic, as scientists discovered anomalies in the current tree ring data well outside the bounds of natural variation. Human conflict and environmental problems are often intertwined. Studies have shown that before the start of the Syrian uprising in 2011, the country had experienced one of the most severe droughts in recorded history. Reducing carbon emissions could prevent more than 295,000 deaths in the U.S. The gradual effects of global warming have mostly failed to motivate many into making life-altering changes in the here and now. But what if we told you there's evidence that acting now might eliminate some pretty dire short-term consequences of climate change. According to a team of researchers from Duke University and the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, slashing carbon emissions won't just reduce global warming, it could also prevent tens of thousands of premature deaths. A 2 degrees Celsius increase in atmospheric warming is usually considered the threshold at which the changes wrought by climate change, such as drought, flooding, declining fish populations, and the spread of tropical diseases, will become more than humans can handle. The two largest sources responsible for climate change in the United States are the transportation and energy sectors. In a research paper published in the journal Nature, researchers modeled what would happen if emissions in both sectors were significantly reduced by 2030. The study showed reduced emissions in both sectors would be enough to put the U.S. on the path of staying under the 2 degrees Celsius threshold. By 2030, under this cleaner energy scenario, as many as 175,000 premature deaths would be prevented in the U.S. and another 22,000 lives saved every year after. Under a cleaner transportation scenario, as many as 120,000 premature deaths in the U.S. were averted, with another 14,000 people saved each following year. The nationwide health benefits of reducing carbon emissions would total around $250 billion a year, which far exceeds the cost of implementing new, cleaner policies. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. 
the possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of a buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. A team of researchers primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water, with which it doesn't easily mix, underneath the surface, and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly, effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation. An idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances that could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. A new study shows a continued drought in California. California's record-breaking drought might not be temporary. Researchers are predicting prolonged warm weather and lasting drought conditions. A new study by Stanford University in collaboration with Northwestern University and Columbia University says California should be prepared for continued drought conditions. California's water supply relies on ice melted from the Sierra Nevada snowpack. The melting snow provides a consistent trickle of water over the dry summer months, and wet winters build it back up again. However, a high-pressured ridge has caused warmer weather and a drier climate. A high-pressured ridge is created when cool air in the northern regions travel south, while warm air in the southern regions travel north. Along the California coast, the ridge creates a barrier, pushing rain-bearing storms away from the state. Researchers believe this barrier will prolong California's drought conditions. A new study explains that this ridge is why the state has been experiencing warmer temperatures year after year. Researchers also say the ridge is causing the shrinking snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas. Furthermore, California's reservoir systems are not equipped for the changing weather. When a deluge does come, much of it runs into the ocean instead of the reservoirs. The melting of Greenland and Antarctica is changing the Earth's rotation. New research suggests that the melting of the ice sheets is shifting the location of the Earth's spin axis, meaning the North and South Poles are moving. As ice melts in Greenland and Antarctica, the geographic North and South Poles are migrating. This is because the mass of the planet is being redistributed, similar to what happens when a twirling skater extends or retracts arms or a leg. The poles head towards where mass is being reduced. For example, if Greenland is the only region that is losing mass, then the North Pole will move towards it. In addition to the melting of the ice sheets, changing patterns in water storage on the continents also affect the direction of the polar motion. It is estimated that 40% of polar movement is affected by the loss of ice mass in Greenland, and 25% due to the loss of ice mass in Antarctica. Another 25% is influenced by changes in water storage on the continents. Up until 2000, the North Pole was moving slowly towards Canada, at a speed of around 8 centimetres per year. Now the North Pole is moving towards the UK and Europe, at a speed of up to 18 centimetres per year. The study does not directly attribute the shift in polar movement to human-caused climate change. However, it suggests global warming is a significant factor in melting polar ice mass and smaller glaciers around the world. The Earth has gotten greener while it's been getting hotter. 
A new study published in the journal Nature Climate Change argues that the huge uptick in atmospheric CO2 since the Industrial Revolution has driven a huge growth in plants. As global atmospheric CO2 concentrations continue to rise, scientists say plants are using the extra CO2 to fertilize their growth. American satellites have detected a greening of up to 50% of the Earth's vegetated land over the past 33 years. Only 4% of the vegetated land has suffered losses. The new study states that if the extra leaves that grew as a result of rising CO2 levels were laid out like a carpet, the leaves would cover the entirety of two continental USAs. However, the team of researchers argues that at some point the plants will acclimatize to rising CO2 concentrations. Then it will have no effect on them. Future plant growth is also limited by factors like access to water and nutrients, which will likely be impacted by climate change. The study was published by an international team of 32 authors led by Chinese and American researchers. Climate skeptics jump on research like this as proof that rising CO2 concentrations isn't so bad, but this ignores the negative aspects of climate change, such as rising sea levels, ocean acidification, and more severe tropical storms. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming sea waters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop. Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia, and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss, but monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Climate change has already caused islands to vanish. A new study led by University of Queensland researchers say that changes in global climate and the subsequent sea level rise has already led to the loss of multiple Pacific islands. A team of Australian scientists say that Isabel, one of the main islands of the Solomon Archipelago, has already lost five of its reef islands. Another six islands on Isabel have declined in area by more than 20% between 1947 and 2014. Meanwhile, residents of the island of Nuatambu have been forced to relocate to the nearby main island of Choiseul because of flooding. Of the dozens of homes that once stood on Nuatambu, at least 11 have already been swept away by the rising waters. While the global average rate of sea level rise has been 3.2 millimeters per year since 1993, the Solomon Islands have experienced an average rise by about 7 to 10 millimeters per year since 1994. The research team, who published their study in the journal Environmental Research Letters on Friday, discovered that the sea level rise has destroyed villages that have existed since the 1930s and has displaced numerous communities. Carbon turned to stone in climate change breakthrough. Researchers in Iceland are hailing a potential game changer for climate change after successfully converting carbon to rock. 
The project could help to reduce global warming by burying the waste CO2 produced by burning fossil fuels. Scientists at the Hultishedi Geothermal Power Plant in Iceland have converted carbon dioxide into the volcanic rock basalt. Researchers pumped 230 tonnes of CO2 into rock 500 metres underground, dissolving the gas in water to prevent it from escaping. More than 95% of the gas turned to stone within two years, speeding up a natural process that takes hundreds or thousands of years. A potential problem for the technique is that it requires 25 tonnes of water for every tonne of buried CO2. However, researchers say seawater can be used, which is abundant at coastal sites. The project is seen as an improvement on existing carbon capture and storage methods that store CO2 as a gas, causing concern about potential leaks. New study reveals cause of glacier melt in Greenland. During the summer of 2015, Greenland experienced its highest rate of glacier melt ever recorded. A study shows the record high melt is linked to the effects of a phenomenon known as Arctic amplification. Arctic amplification refers to the faster warming of the Arctic compared to the rest of the northern hemisphere as sea ice disappears. It is fueled by a feedback loop. Rising global temperatures are melting Arctic sea ice, leaving dark open water that absorbs more solar radiation, further warming the Arctic. According to the study, the atmosphere and the oceans combined are contributing to the melting of vast ice sheets off the coast of northern Greenland. The effects of Arctic amplification are unknown, but scientists believe it can change the Arctic jet stream flow, which circles the northern latitudes. Jet streams are narrow bands of strong winds in the upper atmosphere that follow the boundaries of hot and cold air. In the Arctic's case, frigid polar air is separated from warmer air in the south. A slowdown in the jet stream would cause wilder swings and allow it to bend farther north than usual, creating a high-pressure system called a cutoff high. The cutoff high draws in warm air from lower latitudes, leading to greater ice melt conditions. The study found that during the warmest summer in Greenland, the jet stream reached latitudes never before recorded during that time of year. The Arctic amplification is now cited as the cause for the melting of Greenland's ice sheet, which is the Earth's second largest after Antarctica. The ice sheet holds enough ice that if it were to melt entirely, it would raise the average global sea level by about 7 meters and lead to ocean warming worldwide. 